You say, sell it, then build it. Sell the coaching program first and then build the coaching program. And we see, we have both seen so many folks go and record all these modules and get everything in and load it up. And it's like, all right, great. Now I've got this awesome little thing and I'm going to start selling it. You say, don't do that. Why? Because when you build it before you sell it, it's all about you. And when you sell it and then you build it, it's all about the students getting success. What do you mean by so, that? Okay, so, so here's the way it works, right? When you are, first of all, when you are at the level that you can teach something, you're already a 10, right? So even if you try to dumb it down, the best you could hope for, right, is like a six, right? Because you know all the jargon and the acronyms and you understand all the concepts, and it's nearly impossible for you to get down back down to a one. You, you can't do it. It's, it's, it really is a, a, um, a mental challenge. However, when you sell a program and say, hey, guys, I do X, Y, and Z, um, and I want to show you how to do it, and I'm going to have an exclusive small group coaching program. You could come and join me. It's 597, whatever it is, and we're going to spend the next few weeks together, and I'm going to show you how to do what changed my life, and it's going to be great. What happens is your engagement with that student, with those students, is going to actually build your course by you calling them and finding out, hey, Johnny, you were supposed to do this. Why isn't it done? Oh, I didn't understand this. I, you know, you were telling me about crocheting, but I don't have the tools to crochet. And it's like, oh, that's right. My first module needs to be to get the crochet needles or whatever, right? And then you call Sally and you're like, hey, Sally, um, you were supposed to do this, but it's not done. And you're like, oh, that's because I, Sally doesn't know how to log onto the website. So because you are a 10 when you're ready to coach, you are too far disconnected between a 10 and a one, somebody who's just starting. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you want to sell it to build it. You want to sell it to build it, not necessarily before you build it, but this is how you build it. How do you build your course? By helping students. Students are first. Everything, I, I had a, a conversation once with the coach. I won't say his name because everybody, a lot of people know him. Sweetheart guy. We had this conversation. Tom, with all due respect, I totally disagree with you. He spent about 90 days building this massive uh, course on Kajabi literally bombed. Nobody liked it, dropped out and said coaching wasn't for him. And I told him, I said, no, coaching is for you. You just did this incorrectly. Um, and this particular guy, he's super intelligent. So it made the problem, the disconnect even worse because he's using big, you know, SAT words and acronyms the whole time. And he's, he's very wealthy and successful. So uh, it was even more difficult for him. But the question is this, how do you build your course? You build your course by helping students achieve the result that you promised them and you record those modules. And then all of a sudden you realize like, Oh, this is what I have to do to get somebody success. Not what I remember from three years ago of doing it. That's why it's most effective. So how do the, 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 I guess the, the main question now becomes, how do you sell something that you don't have? How do you, how do you go about selling this? Well, whether you have it or not is really inconsequential. It's, the, it's really how do you sell anything, right? Whether the course exists or doesn't. But the way I would do it is I would just say I'm putting, um, you know, well, there's so many different ways. I mean, this question is complicated because there's so many different ways to sell something. Uh, there's the basic rules of marketing, which we don't have to get into. But essentially, um, you need to define your deliverable, right? Like, what do you actually do? Which sounds easy, but... A lot of coaches, they try to make a message that is super inclusive. And because they're speaking to everyone, they're speaking to no one. So the first thing you got to do is you got to say, hey, does everybody want what I'm selling? And if the answer is yes, you got to immediately change your message because your messaging should turn some people on and turn some people off, right? You want to create a thousand raving fans. You got to create a thousand people who disagree with you. So or who don't want what you have. So the first thing is you got to really get good at what exactly is it that you do and for who. And then you just got to get out there 
And you got to start talking about that. You can go on um, my favorite channel, of course, is a podcast. You can go uh, on a podcast tour. You can start getting into Facebook. Now there's this new app, Clubhouse, obviously, we're all on. Um, but you got to start talking about it. You got to start contributing. You got to start um, doing, or you could just hire a marketing team, which is great. If you're in that position, a marketing team can help you get your message out there to attract an audience to get your first handful of clients. All you need is five, eight, 12, 15 people, get them in a group and get them that result, whatever it is, right? If it's a real estate deal or, or 12 minute abs or whatever, get them in a group, get them that result, capture the good news of that, that social proof and put it out there and you will have the seeds of a massively successful coaching business that is student first. Yeah, I guess the question is more not how do you sell something in general, but how do you sell something that doesn't exist? How do you, um, you don't, I don't have any testimonials. I don't have a tangible, tangible program. I don't have any, I don't have anything that somebody can, you know, when they go to the checkout counter, they can boop and, and go, you know what I'm saying? That I'm selling something that is a phantom that might exist one day that I hope exists one day. That's kind of what I'm getting at there. And, yeah, and I have no testimonials. I have nobody yeah, that's simple. seeing in my proof. I mean, it's really simple. The way that uh, the best way to do it is um, the best way to do it is to talk about the deliverable and then to actually get out there and help people. Because once people know that you're, this is what's one of the great things about podcasting and clubhouse is that people will know that you are authentic and worth your weight in salt, right? Um, when you're actually giving out good advice, because when people hear you, they'll say, oh, this guy or this girl knows what they're talking about. So I, um, I think the fact that the program doesn't exist is the benefit is that you guys, you're going to help me build the course. I'm, you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with me in a small, intimate group of people. I'm going to be totally dedicated to your success. And uh, you'll find an audience if you start using that terminology. If you start getting out there and, and talking about what this course is going to be, it's going to be live in person with me, one-on-one, -on -one, holding your hand. And in exchange for that, I'm going to give you a discounted price because you're going to actually become part of the program and helping me build it. I mean, I think that's exciting and people will want to know more about that. And also, Brian, something that you're, you know, you're the master of is networking, right? I mean, in, if I wanted to start from ground zero, I would call Brian Tripp, right? I would say, okay, I need to get a hold of Brian. This guy's connected to everybody, right? How do I get and how can I get an endorsement from him? Because he knows who I am and that I, I'm, I'm good at this. How can I get him to recommend me? So I think a, a, a network is, is, uh, is key there too.